Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. I found these newsletters, Word in Due Season newsletters from way back. I was just doing some calculations 26 years ago. And uh, there's, some good, there's some good articles here. Building Your Faith Muscles by Pastor Ed. A Kitty Corner page with stuff for the kids. Uh, an article by Bonnie J.C. Wood, The God Standard. And it's a really good article, praise the Lord. An article on the Word of Faith by that wild man, Dr. Bill. Uh, and then a testimony by Belinda C. Bailey about how she got healed from her kidney stones. So, wow, good stuff. And uh, what I want to do is, you know, I was going through all this stuff. I've got, I've got records that go back. I'm kind of, my dad is, was a, you know, history buff. He liked to collect history of everything. And I just kind of picked that up from him. So I've got all the Word and New Seasons that were published. This was back before there was an Internet. Well, not necessarily Internet. Internet came about 1969, but the... The World Wide Web didn't start until 1992. So there weren't a lot of regular folk that were out there. But uh, so what we did is we published this and we mailed it. It's actually got the nonprofit organization U.S. postage permit here. And I just got a kick out of going back through this. And like I said, this Brother Hagen's Word of Faith magazine, back when it was the same size as our Word New Season. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of pages. I, I really got a kick out of this. This is uh, all the stations that he was on in 1979. Praise the Lord. That's just great. But it, it really made me think about, uh, you know, it's a good thing to go back and see where we've come from. And, and that's really kind of what I had rolling around in my heart is to go back and look at some things of where we came from and, and what we're all about. Uh, and I've got a couple of things here that I wanted to share from the word studies that I did. Uh, I did a little word study every month when we did, were doing these newsletters. And uh, here we go. The works of the flesh and the works of the spirit. A little bit of word study. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do that. And I just I think it will be a blessing to you if you have studied this out. Now, this is, like I say, these were the newsletters. The Faith and Victory Church Newsletter, A Word in Due Season, way back. And for those of you that aren't aware, you know, Pastor Ed's still on the radio. He's on Word of Faith Radio every single day. And uh, hit the, the title of the radio program is A Word in Due Season. So we're continuing from these small beginnings that we had. All right, let's look at uh, the works of the flesh as opposed to the fruit of the Spirit. How do they do it? Do a little Greek word study here. Uh, as I say here in the, in the article, we're going to uh, consider a list of the works of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. So we won't be able to put that up, by the way, because I'm still working on the computer <laughs> that, that puts the uh, scripture up. So you all just have to look in your Bibles. All right. Uh, so the fruit of the Spirit, remember fruit grows in a Christian's life. As the saying goes, a Christian is not perfect, just forgiven. We've heard that term or phrase uh, a lot. And that's really true. We don't have to be perfect to be believers. See, once we're born again, Jesus begins to work on us. <laughs> and we should begin to work on us to get our minds conformed to the Word of God. That's really what it's all about. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 talks about, 1 through 3 there, talks about the fact that we need to renew our minds to the Word of God. So as, as a part of that renewal of our mind, we need to look at our own motivations, where we're coming from, and see the difference between the fruit of the uh, works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. Okay, fruit grows. We talked about that. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21 talks about the fact that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We don't have to attain to that. If you're made, like for instance, when I was born, I was born a male of the species, okay? I don't have to do anything in particular to be a male. That's just how I was made. Now, there's some folks today trying to go different directions, but 
how they were made is how they were made, all right? That's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, to, to think otherwise is not scriptural, by the way. But, so how we were made, we were, we were not really involved in that. You know, you go back to when you were originally made as a, a baby, uh, that happened outside your influence, so to speak. Well, in the same way, we're born again. When we get born again, we're made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, because we've been made that doesn't mean we never sin again. You know, 1 John uh, 1, 9 is in the Bible for a reason. And it is, as Pastor say, has said many times, in the Bible and for Christians. We can still sin in the flesh because the flesh is not what's born again. The human spirit is what's born again. All right, so we have to renew our minds so that we don't work in the, le the lust of the flesh and the works of the flesh. But So we'll, we'll get into this here. As Christians, we are not to let the things listed below, talking about the works of the flesh here, uh, be once named among us, Ephesians 5.3. Now, I like that. Not, not just that we don't do the works of the flesh, that it not even be named among us. In other words, we should have the reputation as believers that it not even be named among us. And uh, I think there's a whole lot of Christians these days, quotes, Christians these days, that are not in a situation that people are saying, oh, well, we, we, uh, we're, we're not sure whether we should name it or not. Uh, as believers, we need to set a high standard for our lives and live as God desires us to live, holy and set apart unto him. He told us, be ye holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1.15. You'll notice that's New Testament. Be ye holy as I am holy. Well, hallelujah. He would not tell us to be holy if it were not possible to be holy. That's one of those Salem moments right there. If it were not possible. See, there's a lot of people say, well, I can't be holy. I'm sorry, I just can't be holy. Well, hold on. Because if the Bible says, be holy as I am holy, you know, God never requires things of us that we're not capable of doing. We just have to set our mind to it. We have to renew our mind to it. Uh, he would not tell us to do this if we're not possible. Let's keep in mind, it's not only possible through his power and strength, or it is possible through his power and strength, Philippians 4, 13, not our own. We, as believers, can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now, see, a lot of people quote that scripture in the context of, uh, well, I can do anything. No, as Pastor pointed out this morning, you know, you can't do anything in and of yourself. But in Christ Jesus, you can. Well, why don't we take that scripture and apply it to being holy? I can do all things, even be holy. Hallelujah. Well, there you go. All right, let's look at our list here. Adultery, mulchia in the Greek, means kind of duh here, adultery, <laughs> voluntary sexual intercourse between a married man and, uh, or a married woman, married man, and someone who is uh, not his wife. Okay, I should read that better. Between a married man and someone who is not his wife, or a married woman and someone who is not her husband. Helps to read it, I suppose trying to just say it however you want to say it. Next one, fornication, pornia, pornia, Greek word there. It means... Harlotry, from a word meaning to indulge in unlawful, unlawful lust, also means sexual intercourse between unmarried people. This word is also the root word for the English word pornography. Now, if pornea is the word that is the root word of pornography, it kind of tells me something about pornography. Remember, what you do with your mind, Jesus said, you know, if you've already committed the sin in your heart, then it's as though you've already done it in the natural, in, the, in your body. So pornography, then, would be fornication. Uncleanness, acartharsia, impurity from a word meaning impure or lewd. In other words, pretty much what's on television. <laughs> well, it's the truth. Uh, uh, un uncleanness, acartharsia, that's one I read, impurity, uh, lasciviousness, Aselagia, boy, don't you love Greek words? Aselagia, licentiousness, lacking legal or moral restraints. Wow, I can think of some politicians that applies to. All right, <laughs> to disregard sexual restraints to lack control. 
Lasciviousness essentially is giving in to the flesh, not being controlled by the spirit and the mind. You just let your body go. That's lasciviousness. Uh, idolatry, idolatria, wow. uh, image worship. That is to worship anything other than God as God, especially in regard to physical things. Putting something before God. Like, oh, I don't know, fishing boats, golf clubs, <laughs> money. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we, we're going to meddling now. <laughs> All right. Witchcraft. Now, this one's interesting. Witchcraft, pharmakia. Pharmakia. It means medication or drugs. Pharmakia. Uh, only by extension does it mean magic. Uh, use of drugs, uh, it is a use of drugs to induce a non-natural or altered mind state. Often it was used in biblical times as a form of magic. In other words, when people started having visions through drugs, it was actually, they thought of it as magic. The English word pharmacy is derived from the word pharmakia. Pretty interesting. Hatred. Electra. Wow. Wow. It means hostility or opposition, the feminine form of ekthros, or to hate, hateful, odious, hostile, or adversary, especially used to describe Satan. Satan is hatred, essentially, okay? What we see in the Middle East going on right now with ISIS is a perfect example of Satan's hatred of the Jews, hatred of the things of God. It's a manifestation, an outward physical manifestation of hatred, and that's one of the works of the flesh. Variance, eris in the Greek. It means to quarrel or wrangling. You know, next time you get into a quarrel, think about the fact that's a work of the flesh, which we're to avoid. Wrath, or oh, skipped one, uh, emulations. Zelos, meaning zeal, ze jealousy, and malice from a word meaning to glow hotly. To glow hotly, that's pretty good. Uh, wrath, thumos, passion as in breathing hard, comes from the word meaning to kill and slaughter. Now again, works of the flesh, you see it in what the devil's doing, particularly with regard to ISIS and some of these other things. It just, this is, it's like a description of everything they're doing here. Uh, strife, etherethia, intrigue, factions from a word meaning to, to stimulate or to provoke. Seditions, dictastatia. Disunion, dissension from words meaning to have two positions, to have an uprising. Sedition is what happens in a lot of churches that lead to church splits. I mean, think about the definition. Disunion, dissension from words, mean, words meaning to have two positions, to have an uprising. Now, I know there are churches, I've heard of this, I haven't actually seen it, praise the Lord, I'm glad. But I've heard of churches where the folks got all bent out of shape because they got red carpet. And I don't like red carpet, I want blue carpet. And then they got the red carpet, the blue carpet people left and started another church. Well, that's a work of the flesh. I don't care what color carpet we have. I don't care what color chairs or walls or whatever we have. If we come together in one accord to minister to the Lord and to hear from the Word of God, all right? I don't care what kind of building it is. It could be a tent. Matter of fact, I've had some real good meetings in tents. Had a tent meeting in Winston-Salem. We had, I think it was two nights, taught on healing, people getting healed. I mean, it was, it was great. Praise the Lord. But who cares what the circumstance of the building is? Now, we have a really nice building here. And we've got a, we, we can be thankful for what we have available to us, definitely. But getting into fusses over the carpet, have two positions to have an uprising, People uprising against the pastor and against the church. I mean, come on, folks. That's a work of the flesh. Heresies. Haleresis in the Greek. It means to choose as a party or group disunion. Comes from a word to take for oneself an opinion or to prefer. Heresies arise when people have an opinion different than the church. Okay? Heresies are much more rampant than we tend to think they are. People think of heresies, they think of some weird, squirrely doctrine. And it can be, but it can also be, uh, as it says here, just to have a party or group that chooses to take for oneself an opinion or to prefer. Envyings, felonio, 
Thelonio, yep. To be, sounds like felony, doesn't it? But it's, anyway, spell with a PH. Uh, to be jealous of, from a word meaning ill will, jealousy, or spite. Another, another work of the flesh. Murders. Murders are works of the flesh. Phonos. To murder or to slay. That's pretty clear. Drunkenness. Methe. Uh, to be intoxicated. Drinking alcohol to the point that the senses are affected. The word methanol, methanol, methanol is derived from this word, from the original Greek word. Uh, drunkenness, we covered that. Revelings, comos, carousal. That is literally meaning letting loose. I kid you not, that's what the Greek says. Letting loose. Revelings. Just having a big time. Let, cutting loose, as they say. Comes from a word meaning to lie outstretched. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's pretty clear, to lie outstretched. All right, the Greek goes on to say that those that do these, prasasso in the Greek, meaning to practice, perform repeatedly or habitually. Now, here's the thing about that Greek word. All of us may have had an envying or maybe even had a seditious thought or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But if you... Do it repeatedly or habitually. Therefore, differing from poleo, meaning a single act, these, things shall, these people shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Ooh. So, the works of the flesh are to be avoided. All right. Next section here. This is talking about the good part. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit. Last month, as it says here in our, in our newsletter, we considered the Greek words used in the list of the works of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. This month, we're going to do a similar study of the fruit of the Spirit list in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. As we said last month, fruit grows in a Christian's life. We need to be cultivating the fruit in our lives. You know, fruit doesn't just haphazardly occur. Now, it can in the sense of a, you know, a wild fruit or whatever. Have you ever noticed wild fruit really is ugly? It's just, it's got a lot of junk and maybe growths and, uh, you know, spots that are, you know, impure, shall we say, or, or, or bruised or whatever. But when you see one that is truly cultivated, where they're taking care of it, where they're, you know, almost, they almost, what's the word I'm looking for? They almost pamper it. You know what I'm saying? They keep all the junk away from it. They keep the frost away from it. They cultivate it. Well, that's the way we're to be with the fruit of the Spirit. We can cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Love is the first one. Agape, meaning divine love. Hallelujah. We're very familiar with that scripture, uh, that, and we have looked at it in Scripture before. Joy, or chera, cheerfulness, delight, from a word meaning happy, and a salutation meaning be well. So they'd come up to each other and say, chera. Now, this is basically a word that's similar to charity. Okay? Uh, a Greek word, the meaning there, to be cheerful, have delight, be happy, and is also a salutation, be well. All right, peace, irene, peace by implication, prosperity. Hallelujah. Peace by implication, prosperity. Now, that kind of makes sense to me. You know, the one thing you can say about having money is that you are not under pressure from being in debt. If you've got a lot of money, your debts are paid. You have a peace. Now, the thing is, as Pastor said this morning, we don't pursue that. We don't look just at what can I get. You know, that's not our motivation. But let's face it, if we have a, a blessing of financial wealth, then we're at peace as far as the finances are concerned. But that's just part of the meaning here. Peace or by implication, prosperity. We are, as believers, to live peaceful lives as much as possible with us, okay? If somebody attacks us now, we can defend ourselves, but as much as is possible with us, basically what we're saying is we don't start things. I didn't start it, but I might finish it. <laughs> Amen? That's pretty much what we're talking about here, to live in peace with all men. Long-suffering. Oh, boy, what a Greek word. Macrothumia. Uh, it means, and the, the definition is not a whole lot better, longanimity. What is that? Okay. Forbearance, fortitude from a word meaning with long, enduring temper. 
endurance, constancy, and perseverance, says Thayer. Long-suffering. A lot of people look at the word long-suffering and they think, I'm to suffer for Jesus. Woe is me. I'm in long-suffering. See, I'm scriptural, brother. No. This kind of long-suffering is to be consistent. I'm consistent on the word. I'm consistent with my confession. I'm consistent in my... That's how I approach long-suffering. See, we look at the suffering part and that taints the meaning. The actual meaning is constancy and perseverance. To persevere. To continue no matter what comes against us. This dovetails with what pastor was preaching this morning. What he was talking about, that if pressure comes against us, that's not the end. We don't stop where the pressure point comes. No, we go beyond that to victory. And I really enjoyed that this morning because that's really part of what we're talking about here with long-suffering. There may be a point that it seems suffering. You know, we've had financial issues. We've had all kinds of things occur. But once you're past them, you look back on them and go, Pfft, that wasn't much. Oh, we came through that okay. But now at that moment, you felt like, oh, the world's going to end. But no, long-suffering is we persevered through the whole thing. And we came out on the other side the way we were supposed to. Gentleness. Crerestolis. I'm making up some of these pronunciations, okay? <laughs> I'm just doing the best I can. All right. Goodness of heart. Kindness. According to W.E. Vine, usefulness or moral excellence. From a word meaning employed or useful. You know, if you're employed, you ought to be useful. You ought to help <laughs> in ways that your employer wants to keep you around, right? All right, to be employed or useful, according to strong moral goodness integrity. You know, I've noticed, oh, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I will. There's a lot of young folks today when they come to work, they don't have a lot of integrity. It's like we have a whole generation of people who don't understand, I'm there to do a job. I'm there to actually benefit the company. They just look at it as, what are they going to pay me? Well, they're not paying me enough. And then they sit around and don't do anything. That is not this gentleness. Gentleness as a believer is not a weakness. See, a lot of people look at somebody that's gentle and think it's a weakness. No, it's a strength. It builds you up internally. It makes you long-suffering. When the fruit of gentleness grows, you become useful. You have moral goodness and integrity, according to Thayer. Goodness is the next one. Agathosune. I love these Greek words. Goodness, virtue, or beneficence. See, your word for the night is beneficence. <laughs> All right. According to Strong, uprightness of heart and life. According to Thayer, uh, so, oh, upright is heart, light according to fair. All right. Uh, sterner quality by which doing good to others is not necessary by, not necessary by gentle means. That's according to W. Vine. And I'm going to have to read it over. Sterner quality by which doing good to others is not necessarily by gentle means. Wow. That's actually pretty cool. Because what it's really saying is there's times in order to be good to somebody, you might have to kick them in the rear. Okay? Emotionally speaking. See, we have a tendency to think, well, if I'm good to somebody, I'm never going to hurt them. Now, sometimes you need to jerk the slack out of them. I had a pastor many years ago, Pastor Larry Boyd in Western Salem, and Brother Larry said, I got a slack jerk in ministry. He was an African-American brother and great guy. And he said, I got a slack jerk in ministry. I'll jerk the slack right out of you. <laughs> and the whole church got straight quick. Okay? Because there are times you need to jerk the slack out of yourself and other people as well. So, sterner quality by which doing good to others is not necessarily by gentle means. I like that. W. Vine. All right. Faith. Pistis in the Greek. Persuasion. Credence. Conviction. Truth towards God. From a word meaning to pacify or consent. A conviction based upon hearing according to W. Vine. I like that one. A conviction based upon hearing. I hear the word and it becomes a conviction in my heart. That's faith. Hallelujah. I like that. Meekness. Preotes. Gentleness by implication, teachableness or humility. Meekness means to be teachable. I heard Buddy Harrison say that many years ago. He was talking to 
people that are, were ministers, I was there for a, a minister's conference on uh, helps ministry, ministry of helps seminar, and I was there for a week. Matter of fact, what's interesting is I was there for the help seminar at the uh, FCF facility. They had just built it, just had it ready in time for this seminar. And there were a couple of walls that weren't quite totally ready yet. But it was the, during the week of camp meeting, and it was the camp meeting that Pastor was at. So he was over across town in camp meeting, and I was there in the FCF facility having a, a week of the School of Help seminar. That was cool. We were both there in Tulsa at the same time. And it wasn't until years later we put two and two together and figured out that was the case. At any rate, meekness is to be teachable. And Buddy Harrison talked about the fact that true meekness was kind of letting go of your own opinion and accepting the teaching that you hear from anointed ministers. That's meekness. All right, temperance. Ekratia. Self-control, from a word meaning to be strong in a thing or to be masterful. The various powers bestowed by God upon men are capable of abuse. The right use demands the controlling power of the will under the operation of the Spirit of God, according to Vine. Temperance, self-control. Best definition for it really is self-control. You are not controlled by your flesh. You're not controlled by your own desires. You're controlled by a higher power. And the higher power is God and His Word. And as we study the Word of God and we build the Word of God into our heart, we have temperance or self-control. Note, these are nine more works of the flesh. There are nine more works of the flesh than there are fruit of the Spirit. Resisting the wrong requires less than doing the wrong. Resisting the wrong requires less than doing the wrong. There are less fruit than works because fewer are required. If you let these things abound in you, you will be well on your way to Christian maturity. Let the fruit of the Spirit grow. Cultivate it in your life. Water it with the water of the Word. Ephesians 5, 26. Now it's interesting that in April of 1991, we had that teaching. And that was, what, 24 years ago? If I'm doing my math right, which is not at all likely. So anyway, <laughs> praise the Lord. I know it hasn't been very long here tonight, but looking back at our past, like this edition of the Word of Faith from 19, uh, what it was, 76. 1976, I was a sophomore in college at the time. And there's just so much here. Hold fast your confession of faith, a message by Brother Hagin. Wow. And to think that this was coming to my house when I was in college and I was getting the word of faith built into me right there when I was in college. It's been a while since college. Hallelujah. But at any rate, looking back at some of these things has been a blessing to me. I really got a kick out of it. I was reading a lot of notes. I kept my notes from Bible studies and such for many years ago and I was reading them to Belinda. Some of them were pretty good. Some of them weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Those the world will never see. <laughs> but the ones that were good, I might just kind of shake them out and preach them again. It's some of them pretty good. Now, it's, it's handwritten, so I might have to pray for the interpretation. But that's okay. <laughs> we'll just stay after it. Praise the Lord. Well, did you get anything out of this tonight? I kind of enjoyed looking back at some of these things and, and picking up on some of this. I will invite you to... What? Yes. Thank you for reminding me, Pastor. So, I will invite you to look at these later after service. I think you'll get a kick out of them. Particularly the uh, cartoon of me there is kind of fun. That's off of my tape series. So, praise the Lord. That's kind of fun. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address PO Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving